<laughs> All right, let's take a look around the Big 12 for Week 10 and recap it here. <laughs> okay, Steve. The well, game of the weekend. The game of the weekend, regardless of what happened in the K-State game, we're going to get to that. I would say it takes a home loss to Texas Tech 23-22. Texas Tech was coming off of giving up 60, I mean, essentially 59 to Baylor the week or two before. And – Iowa State stumbles. Now, it honestly feels like Iowa State was due for a loss. I mean, you've been saying it for a while. They've not been playing well at all. Um, And then, again, it's one of those teams like Texas Tech that responded well after a loss, which is what you want to see from your team. And they are still in the Big 12 title hunt as well. They only have two conference losses. They had a game-winning drive of less than two minutes of play. Um Taj Brooks is an animal at running back. Uh, this was a great game. Uh, I, I plan to go back and watch the highlights of it. But, man, shout out to Texas Tech for getting a top 15 win at Iowa State. This really changes things up. It really makes you uh, think about what's going to happen the rest of the way in the Big 12, man. Every game matters for sure. People were uh, giving me a lot of crap for saying that Iowa State was on fraud alert. This is why. This is why. How do you lose at home to to Texas Tech? Ah, man, it. it I don't get it, man. I, what is going on with these teams? Like it, this should not happen. But you know what? Props to Texas Tech. Yes, they do have Taj Brooks, really good. Um, you know, Iowa State. Their good defense is their passing defense. I said this before. Their rush defense is sus, and it showed. And that kind of brings me to, like, I would say it's got interesting games now. I mean, they got to go against KU. KU had a bye week this week. They they're going to be preparing against Iowa State, that's for sure. And they just got a whole they got a gold mine of uh, film to to watch with this Texas Tech game. So uh, they're definitely going to be up for this, and it'll be played at Arrowhead. So I mean, good luck to Iowa State. I mean, they might they might lose a couple more games, which would be really crazy for the Big 12. Um, but, uh, yeah, Texas Tech, congratulations. I mean, I did not expect this. Most games that Texas Tech plays, it's, like, super high scoring. This is relatively low scoring. I don't think this even uh, covered the um, – I think the right. over-under was 56 and a half, and it hit 55. So the over-under people know what they're doing for sure. Wow. Well – Big win for Texas Tech, man. Big yeah. win. And Iowa State's got a – they got some tough games left too. I think they play at Utah. They have KU. They have K-State. I mean, it's not going to be easy the rest of the way. Also, Matt Campbell is known for going 7-5. and five. It's still on the table for Matt Campbell to go 7-5. and five. <laughs> Oh, my God. Could you imagine? No. Could that, you imagine? They go start 7-0 and oh and end up 7-5. and five. I think Texas Tech did that one year. I'm like 90% sure they did that one year. Oh, my God. That'd be crazy. Moving on. Probably the most frustrating game k State will probably play in like a 10-year span. Losing 24-19 to at Houston. Um, k State can't run the ball right now. They, they cannot run the ball. Um, Which is insane to say. That is insane. Yeah. I mean, k state has got a top 10 rushing offense, and they've not been able to run the ball for a while now. Um Houston won the game by having less than 250 total yards. Horrible. Case that was a two touchdown favorite. They lost to a team that couldn't throw a forward pass, and yet somehow they were 12 of 12 passing. This is in, this is an inexcusable, unacceptable loss for Case. I don't I don't care about saying anything bad anymore. This is an unacceptable loss for Case. Everyone should be embarrassed with this performance. That is absolutely correct. This is the worst Big 12 conference loss in a very, to my memory, a super long time. I mean, I, I can't, I can't put a uh, a feel of like what what hurt worse. You know, what was a game where like this was? We came into this game thinking, okay, eight and one, then we'll have the bye week and we'll have tough two home games, and then we're looking to Iowa State. We just we completely dropped the ball, so to speak, in this game, big time. Handed it over, actually. We just handed it right over. Props to Houston for showing up, I guess, you know. 
I mean, two wins in a row for that team. Two wins in a row. Crazy. Three, and three out of the last four. Uh, I'll say this. I want to say two things, and then we can move on. Uh, K-State's, I said this earlier in our, our main podcast, K-State's gone 15 consecutive second-half drives without scoring a touchdown. Unacceptable, dude. Avery Johnson has eight, eight turnovers this season. As Brian Hanley said about another quarterback in the conference, he's going to throw it to you. You just got to catch it. And uh, other teams are catching it right now. That's for sure. That's for damn sure. Yep. Moving on. Super fun team. Love this team. Arizona State wins over Oklahoma State. Again, Oklahoma State cannot get it done. They are still searching to find their first win of the season in conference play. It's it's astounding. They 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 <laughs> I just feel so bad, dude. Like how I, I, is insane, dude. I can't believe it. 274 oh. total yards on 27 touches. You and I both oh, I don't know. I can't remember. I think you said no, you I, called for I, the I, upset. I think Oklahoma State to win the game. You have an apology to make to Arizona State now. All right, here's what I'll say. Um <laughs> Arizona State is a lot better than everyone thought that they would be this season, including Arizona State fans. I mean, for them to be six and two and their over under on wins, I think was four, is is impressive and amazing. Uh, they did not start off the year that great, in my opinion. Um, barely beating Texas State, they allowed Mississippi State to come back down thirty. Um, but you know what? They put together probably their best performance of the season uh, in a rain delayed game winning 42 to 21 at Oklahoma state. Very impressive. Cam Scadaboo is insane. Uh, 27 touches for 274 yards, three touchdowns. That guy's an animal. If you play against them, uh, I don't know how you stop that guy rushing or receiving. That guy's crazy. They got their quarterback back. He passed for 300 yards. They're a very, very, very talented team uh, on offense. And uh, man, Props to them for being six and two. And I'm sorry for picking Oklahoma State to win this game. I don't know what I was doing. I thought Oklahoma State would somehow find a way to win at night. Uh, and they did it. And Arizona State's for real. Um, shout out to them, man. I'm sorry. Well, I had Oklahoma State losing because they have not shown to stop the run. They just haven't been able, any team that has a like solid rushing offense, Oklahoma State can't figure out how to stop the run. So I thought, well, Arizona State, who do they have? Oh, they've got this beast called Scadaboo. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he's actually running people over, just trucking people left and right. I'm like, oh, oh, never mind. It's Arizona by a lot because they're going to just dominate. I did say that Oklahoma State was going to get like 10 and or, or sorry, Oklahoma State was going to get 10. Arizona and Oklahoma State was going to get 10. Arizona was going to get like 33 or something. Uh, so I mean, I think the point spread was about the same. I'm not 100% sure. I, I'm not going to try to do the math right now. But I did say uh, <laughs> that Oklahoma State was going to lose by a lot because they just can't stop the run. I don't know what's going on with that team. But 0-6, oh, oh they officially cannot go bowling. Right? I think that's it, right? They have to win all three of their next games. They have to be 6-6. Six and six. Oh, that's right. <sighs> okay, yeah. Yep. But they're not gonna they're not gonna be at this point. I mean, you can't start 0 and six in a conference and expect to win your next three. So but right. K State did it one time. K State went three and oh, went then went 0 and six and won their last three. So it can happen, but not easy. Not easy. I, if you're Mike Gundy, I'd be thinking about retirement. I would be. Yeah, I think uh not because um not because people are going to fire him or anything like that, but I just think with the way the transfer portal and NIL and everything has happened He's about that a lot too. This isn't the kind of environment uh, for a coach like Mike Gundy. Unfortunately, this is a totally different kind of beast. And I don't think he's adapted well to nope. this kind of uh, environment, which is unfortunate because I do like Mike Gundy. I think he's one of the uh, most interesting and fun coaches to uh, watch. And he's really, I mean, he's been with this team for over 20 years. Um, so he's basically like the Bill Snyder of Oklahoma State, so to speak. And then not only that, but he also played, right? He was a quarterback for their team at one point, right? Yep. 
So, I mean, he's basically like Oklahoma State royalty. I mean, he's the kind of like guy for for them that would probably get the field named after him. I mean, not really, but I mean, I could see Gundy Stadium, you know, like that'd be kind of a cool. They'll have a statue of him probably up front, just yeah. in case they does. So, yeah. Moving on. Uh, before we do that, though, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and tell your friends. We are so close to monetization. Uh, please, if you're a Big 12 fan, subscribe to this channel. We are so close to 1,000 subs. Moving on here. UCF dominates, dominates Arizona. We both picked UCF to win. Uh, what I did I say, we, though? What did I scores. say? What was, your, I, what was your score prediction? Well, my score was 33-7, to seven, and you're like, I don't have confidence in UCF's defense. That's a little crazy. And that's like, maybe you're right. I don't know. But Arizona's offense has been atrocious. And you did actually put that in. Uh, it's actually one of the shorts that we have. If you want to go watch it, I have it posted up there. But you're like, but it could go that way because Arizona State's offense is has been horrible. Arizona's and offense has been bad. What? What is this is insane. Did they not? Uh, did they not score a touchdown? They just kicked field goals the whole no, time? No, they scored a touchdown. They just went for two. I think they kicked two field goals, and then they went for two. Oh, okay. All right. Still, uh, seven. <laughs> two, touch, two touchdowns, actually, for Noah Fafita. Oh, wow. Tedero okay. McMillan, six catches, 84 yards, one touchdown. They're still not so, getting him the ball enough. Not enough at all. Need to be so, ball. so it was – what was it? Um 30 something to, 30, to six 30, at, 35 to six and, and shout out to them for you know changing to a new quarterback for the fourth time this year he almost throws for 300 yards risk yeah so Dylan much for them not being able to throw a forward pass 300 <laughs> they yards found somebody steve including they found, some they found someone and he threw a hell mary that they scored on which is yeah, embarrassing if you are you uh arizona it's absolutely embarrassing if you are Arizona. So it's so crazy, dude. I like their half, the score that at the half was what I basically predicted for the whole game. I was like, oh my God. I'm like, they're gonna literally completely dominate this team and they deserve it. UCF has had a really, really tough time in the conference play. Uh, in fact, their first win was at like back in August, I think against TCU because TCU was like their second game or some or third game. Yeah. It was their third game because they, their non-conference for whatever reason, the schedule was made up where like they played TCU, then they took a break and then they played Florida, uh, yep. which was random, but uh, yeah, it's just the way their schedule was all flipped around. Um, but they hadn't played a, uh, hadn't won a conference game since TCU. So it had been a while for them to win. Um, yeah. And so uh, I'm just glad if there was any team that was going to win and it was rainy that there too, as well. Right. I mean, it was downpouring in uh, central Florida in Orlando. I so I, I didn't see the whole game. So, but I was RJ, watching it a little RJ bit. Harvey again, dominated 184 yards, a couple touchdowns, man. I mean, imagine imagine scored. running the ball, imagine running the ball. Cause it's raining. But then they also threw – well, it didn't rain the whole time. It did let up in the second half. But, I mean, it just – look at this, man. I mean, that's a, that's impressive. UCF, congratulations on your massive win. You definitely massive needed win. it. Sure, that bounce, sure the bounce house was UCF crazy. Got it. I mean, they're the home team. And if you're Arizona, man, you got to be thinking, we made a big mistake hiring Brett Brennan. We, we, they were picked to be in the top five, and they are one in five in conference – and three and six overall. I know it's going to take a while to build it up, but I mean, the pieces were there, dude. The pieces were there. They should be scoring more than 12 with Fafita and McMillan, man. They just should. Mm -hmm. I'd be so mad if I was a Arizona fan. Moving on. I think we both picked Baylor to win this game. Yes. Uh, Baylor has really found something lately. Um, I've been saying for a while, they're a good team that hasn't played well for an entire game. Uh, and they found a way to win here. They scored 17 in the fourth quarter to come back and beat TCU. Um, shout out to Dave Aranda for saving his job. Uh, Cause this, we called it the hot seat bowl, man. We called it the hot seat bowl and uh, Dave Aranda won the game. So uh, shout out to them. And, you know, TCU can play some offense, but my God, they cannot play defense. Uh, don't look now, but Baylor's won three in a row. 
right? I think so. Yeah, I think Baylor so. has just won three in a row. Yep, uh, and uh, TCU just came off of an emotional home win against Texas Tech. So this is uh, I, I'm I'm happy for Baylor. Um, I I definitely think that uh, you can now after you've you've beaten Texas Tech, you beat TCU. Uh, who was the other team they beat? I can't remember. Right? It was it Oklahoma. <laughs> Everybody's beating Oklahoma, so I can't. I can't. Uh, up oh, Oklahoma. All right. I'm gonna say, yep. So you've got one more game in Houston uh, later down the stretch, and you've beaten all the Texas teams. So, um, you know, look look out for that. Uh, but I definitely eight and four easily. Yeah. Easily. I, uh, I think uh, I think Baylor has found its footing. It took him a little bit. Um, I've said this way before anybody else, way before anybody else. But I, I said that that loss to Colorado carried with them for a couple weeks past Colorado, which is something you cannot do. But uh, they managed to uh, nip it in the butt. Got that huge win against Texas Tech. Beat a beat the worst team in in Oklahoma State, and then they played a close game with. TCU. And they should have beat. They should have beaten Colorado. They should have, yeah, and then that's why that's why it was probably what carried them so long is because they, you know, they let that loss just carry with them, and that's again you cannot do that. You gotta you gotta cut it right there and be like, okay, we lost. Let's move on next next game, whatever. But they just were not able to do that. But I just want to say, um, you know, Dave Miranda, I think your I think your job is secured now. I think you're doing great. Sonny Dykes, uh, yikes, bro. Sonny yikes, Dykes, bro. he is he's in the hot seat for sure. Yep. Uh they have they have really, really struggled ever since that 2022 season. And it's been two seasons. That's that's not good. But Bo- both coaches had struggled, you know, since their glory day uh showings. Because Baylor had that uh Big 12 championship. What was it? Uh 2021. 20... 21, yeah. So it, it's it's been it's been taking a couple seasons, but Baylor uh, never count out Baylor. Uh, that's why I would say you could have counted them out. They have the athletes. They they have the athletes. They always have a quarterback, and yep. uh, you know Dave Aranda found a way to get a dub. 